Often when making games in Unity, you'll need to carry out an instruction several times. Now, some people's approach might be to just repeat the same instruction in a script, but it's not the correct way of doing it really. So the correct way of doing it would be to use something called a for loop. And that's simply a way of repeating a set of instructions until a certain criteria is met. So in this example scene, I've simply got an empty object that I'm going to use as a holder for the script. And it's also going to act as a location for us to spawn several objects a certain distance apart. And we're going to use the for loop to specify how far apart each of those is going to be made. So if I go ahead and create a new JavaScript, and I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it looper. And we'll go to edit. Okay, so we don't want to put our for loop into update because effectively um, we just want to carry out this set of instructions once. In this example, what we're going to be doing uh, is to create uh, a set of things at the start of the game. So I'm just going to use start for this example. Okay, so into start, what I'm going to do first of all is to create the kind of basics uh, of my for loop. So usually you'll use uh, an integer variable which we'll call i as example. And we need to set that to a default value of zero. Then we're gonna establish the for loop. So we'll say for i equals zero. So the first parameter there is the um, start value of the integer. Then what it should be when it's finished. So we're gonna say less, less than or equal to three. And then we're gonna say how many to add to that value of i each time this loops round. So we're just gonna add one. So we could either say plus equals one, but it's quicker just to say i plus plus. Okay, so what this is gonna do is going to cycle through and uh, add one to the value of i each time it executes whatever instructions I put in here. So for example, I could debug.log, for example, let's say we made ball and then add on to the end of that um, uh, value of i. So whatever value i is, this time it's looped around, uh, it's going to print that out. Okay, so if we save that and go back to Unity and apply that to our creator object, when we press play, what you'll see straight away is it says made ball three. So if I look at my console, you can say it says made ball zero, one, two, three. Okay, so uh, any of these kind of values is counting up until it equals three. So the first thing is zero, then one, then two, then three. And it's looped through those straight away because it's just simply repeating that instruction um, until that criteria is met. So what can we do with that? Well, we don't just want to debug something. So what we'll do is actually create an object. So if you remember from uh, previous tutorials, instantiate is the way to create an object. So uh, we might say, for example, my prefab, and we'll create a member variable so we can drag and drop that, uh, assign it in a moment. And I can tell you now I'm going to use a rigid body object. Um, so you could use a game object if you weren't using uh, rigid bodies. And the crucial thing here is what we want to do is pass in as a position uh, the value of i so that what we're effectively doing is using that for loop not only to repeat instructions but to change the instruction each time it repeats. So what I'm going to do up here is also establish another private variable i.e. inside the script which I'll call pos. And I'm going to set that as a vector 3. I'm going to set that equal to transform.position, so the current position of the creator object. That's just going to save me a bit of time uh, in writing the position to create this thing. Then what I'm going to do is say vector3 in here, and I need to pass it a vector3 because it's expecting uh, the position for where to create this prefab. But then what I'm going to do is say pos.x plus the value of i, and then I'm going to say pos.y and pos.z. Okay, so that's passed that in, and then I'm going to use the current rotation of the object we're attached to as the rotation to create. So effectively, what I'm doing there is instead of writing transform.position.x plus i, I've passed that into a variable so it makes it shorter to write. And that way, I can also retrieve that for the y value and for the z value.
Okay, so each time this passes round, x is going to equal zero, or, or add to it zero, then add to it one, then add to it two, and so on until the value of i equals three. So what you'll find, of course, with that approach is that it might not actually be enough. So you might want to multiply that by something else. But before we do that, let's take a look at what it does so far. So if you save your script and switch back, and then drag that script, oh no, sorry, it's already assigned. So have a look at the creator, and you can see now that you've got that my prefab variable. Now I've just made a simple ball with a rigid body and a material on, uh, and saved it as a prefab. If you don't know how to do that, go back to the other tutorial on that. So I'm going to assign that to my prefab and press play. And you can see that because they got created right next to each other, they're effectively overlapping because uh, those prefab objects uh, were a scale of two, so they were overlapping uh, when they're created, so they get forced apart. So what I'm going to do is to add something into uh, my position value for x. So to do that, all I'm going to do is multiply it by a variable name. So I might call this uh, distance or let's call it something distance multiplier. Okay. Then up at the top, I'm going to say var distance multiplier. And it's going to be a float. And I might set it to a default value of 2. And I'll save that, switch back to Unity. Because then when I click on my creator, I can see that I can increase the, the uh, x distance they're created apart uh, if I want to in there. So if I press play again, you can see they're all created um, at a distance of whatever it's selected uh, multiplied by 2. So if I press play and then pause that, I can select these and see that x position of this one is 6, then 4, then 2, then 0. Okay, So it's multiplying that position by 2 each time. Okay, So that's just a great way of actually creating things um, if you're creating a grid of objects in a puzzle game or something like that, for example, um, you could do things like that. Remember, you can also expand upon this. Um, for example, we've used an instantiate command. And remember, it's just repeating this set of instructions. So I could throw something else in there as well. If I wanted, to, uh, for example, to create uh, a pause between the creation of each one, I might say yield, wait for seconds, and maybe throw in half a second gap between each creation. So if you try that out, save it, the result you'll see should look something like this. Okay, so that's just the basics of using a for loop in Unity.